I think phonics is really a critical piece for all children uh, because it's it's the way we learn how to read. If we don't learn the relationships between letters and sounds, then we sort of hit a wall in terms of the amount of words we can recognize by sight. The way we define phonics is the understanding that there's a predictable and a systematic relationship between letter sounds or graphemes and the sounds in words and that that's how we represent sounds and language. So that understanding is critical for learning how to read. Rat. Mm. At. Phonics tends to develop in stages. They begin with a sort of pre-alphabetic stage, which is uh, kind of characterized when we have see young children recognizing a 7-Up label or a Coke label or the McDonald's sign, and they, they, they think they're reading the whole word but they really don't have an understanding at all about the sounds in, in the word Pepsi, for example, and necessarily what, what the Pepsi label says. The next stage that tends to develop is, is a partial alphabetic phase, and that's when children begin to understand a little bit more about phonological awareness or the, the sounds, the understanding of the sounds and the ability to manipulate sounds in speech. And, and the words that they're attempting to read. So they might be able to correctly identify the first or the last sound in a word. But at that phase, they're often getting stuck with those sort of glue letters, the, the vowels in the middle, the medial sounds. And then as children develop better phonological awareness and are able to say each sound, to segment each sound at a phonemic level, then in terms of decoding, they're better able to map letters and spellings to the sounds. And that's called the full alphabetic phase. Once children get a little bit more advanced and develop a even finer grained understanding of that, then they begin to be able to recognize entire chunks or syllables in words and they sort of consolidate this phonetic knowledge and are able to map that to their understanding of phonological awareness. At, pat, m mm at, mat. I think it really helps if teachers can keep in the back of their minds this understanding of the various stages. As I said, they're, they're fairly discreet, but you know, children move through those stages and they might move through several of them even within a certain grade level. So if you know that you're working with a young child that's beginning their understanding of alphabetic awareness and they really have some struggles with understanding how to blend and segment words, then they know that child, especially if they're in first grade for example, they'll know that that child is one of the children that will probably need more differentiated instruction and more small group work perhaps using manipulatives or doing some actual spelling and word work to really help them develop that memory for how letters and sounds work together. Many of your children might read the word cat or the word cake or the word cupcake and be able to read that and decode it the first time fairly slowly. The next time they, they come across that word, it's going to be faster and probably within seeing words with that pattern four times, they're going to automatically read it and just read it as if by sight. And uh, we, we tend to think about uh, sight words as, as, as being those irregular words, but I think the research shows with phonics that actually understanding how phonics works helps children attack or decode those kinds of words that are, that are irregular. But if you have children in your class that are not picking up on that strategy, you can certainly observe that while they're reading. Matt. Matt. You can also keep track of children's spelling. There are programs for progress monitoring for spelling that uh, monitor how well children can use the alphabetic principle to write. And it's really important to be able to look at, at all of that kind of information. Mm, at. If you know what it is, you put it on your card. Oh, good job, Eileen. Good job, Kathyushka. Oh, it looks like everybody got it. We're writing mm, ah, on the line.
It's also important to think about children, for example, who have English as a second language, for teachers to be aware of the fact that there are some phonemes that may not occur in Spanish or Arabic or Creole or many of the other languages that we deal with here in our classrooms. There's not a one-to-one -one correspondence between each phoneme in English and phonemes in other languages. And part of the mismatch between the phonemes revolve around the vowels. Also, a lot of our English language learners may struggle with segmenting at the phonemic level. And so it's helpful for teachers to understand that they may need some additional practice. So being sure that they're able to provide lots of safe and fun kind of practice in word study is important. Look up here and sound it out. O, A, D. What's the word? Lead. Teachers would also want to consider for their children that have learning difficulties uh, such as dyslexia or other reading and uh, language disabilities that these that children tend to have weaknesses in, in phonological awareness, sometimes in, in the phonological memory process. And these can definitely affect, affect how easy or how difficult it is for them to be able to learn to read strategically um, using, using uh, phonics. They might also have smaller vocabulary. Uh, they might have um, difficulties with speech and language. Um, and so th those are just things I think it's helpful for teachers to know. Which is not to say if you have a child that's struggling to learn in your classroom that we should automatically run out and try to label a child or say they're not learning because we've got a label. Um, it, that rather the, the, the onus is on us to try to be prepared to support all children in our classroom to learn this critical skill to read phonetically. Let's say it together. Let's blend it. Math. Mm. Good. Now we're going to take the ending sound. We're going to move it closer. Say it faster. Mm. So if you consider again that sort of stage-based reading development in the area of phonics as sort of a, a framework, then you can go in and use more finely honed assessment tools to inform where instruction needs to occur. Very often children don't get enough practice um, and, and that can be a problem. We've learned through the research and I've seen it in my own research that it's important for children to be able to read connected text, real stories that allow them to practice reading the kinds of phonics, phonetically decodable words that they've learned how to read in instruction. So teachers want to look to make sure that there's good and interesting and engaging colorful pictures and good text, but that also allow children to practice the skills that they're learning. We're beginning to think about phonics as being not just a decoding strategy, but as being a way to help boost children's memory and to build automaticity so that the goal of phonics isn't just to memorize a string of rules, but to develop an ease and an automaticity that will lead to more fluent reading. Good working today, word detectives.